they have always been there. Um, they're actually sipunculid worms, and these are uh, worms that can get up to maybe about half a meter long. They typically live in relatively shallow water. They're under the sand. Um, they feed on detritus. They feed on any decaying organic matter, things like that. And what's happening is that as the sargassum comes closer to shore, um, it begins to decay. And the bacteria that are within the sargassum that are causing that decay, they're removing a lot of the oxygen from the, from the surrounding water. Now, as the sargassum decaying, the siponculids may be attracted to it because it is decaying the organic matter. But then once the oxygen level drops, it's not enough for the worms. And, and so they have to move through the sargassum, come up on top of the surface of it, and try and get more water, more more oxygen. The worms themselves, no, there's the, the there's no no problem. The cypunculids, they're nor, normally they'd be they'd be in the water. They're actually once they're on shore, um, they 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 they're essentially dying. They're not um, they're not negatively going to affect anyone who's passing on the beach. However, the sargassum itself can have negative effects as it decays. We have the release of hydrogen sulfide. Um, and that can aggravate uh, respiratory c conditions, can present a problem for persons with asthma. There's release of ammonia, which is also um, a, a potential problem, strong smell that you associate with, with, with sargassum. Um, that, that, the sargassum itself is more likely to affect um, persons who are using the space than the, um, any of the, the organisms that wash up with it.